Welcome to the Comic Fest 2017. <laughs> All right, what do you guys, uh, I'll just open up the floor to questions. What do you guys want to know? Anybody? You? Good. Yes. You look like you want to say something. Yes, like... Sometimes we don't. <laughs> Sometimes people, you know, you're like, holy shit, I, I, I did, you know, I pitched that last week. You know, sometimes it happens, you know, where um, you pitch an idea and you think it's like the greatest idea and it's like, oh, wait a minute, they did that two years ago. Or, or wait a minute, you know, shit happens, you know, where... Sometimes an idea or something similar, you know, maybe not exactly the same exact thing, but it, it happens. Stuff just floats. And then sometimes, you know, hey, case in point, I pitched something, which I see, um, it was a, um, basically Hulk and Wolverine, it was called Weapon uh, Omega, some shit like that. It was basically a uh, Gamma uh, program with Weapon X program. So it was Hulk with, with claws. I, I, I opened up a comic the other day, I'm like, Fuck, they're doing that, <laughs> you know. So you know, sometimes that shit happens. It's um, you know, <laughs> nothing you can do about it. Most most hated movie I hate right now. Uh, let me think. I I liked Wolverine, uh, the the Logan movie. I, I liked Logan a lot. I thought I thought I thought that was the best portrayal of Logan on the screen yeah, yeah. that there's been. You know, I mean, I really do. Um, I, I don't want to spoil. It. Everybody see the Wolverine Logan movie or no? Yeah. All right, because I don't want to be that asshole that ruins the movie for everybody. You know what I mean? But um, just you know, I just lo love the, the 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 portrayal of him. I, you know, I like the, first of all. Okay, the first Wolverine movie was terrible. Yeah. Okay, let's all establish that. The second Wolverine movie was good until the end, and then it, the ending fell apart. So I, you know, the um, but this one, I think they finally got that movie right. You know what I mean? Uh, movie I. Didn't like, I, I wasn't a big fan of Batman Superman, to be honest with you. Um, and, you know, I wanted to like that movie, because believe it or not, I like Man of Steel. I thought, I like Man of Steel. I know a lot of people have problems with it. I don't care he kills Zod at the end. I don't give a shit. Right? <laughs> so uh, I like Man of Steel. Um, so I wanted to like Batman Superman. I just didn't. Um, same thing with Suicide Squad. I thought the setup was really good, but the villain at the end was just like, you know, was like a Ghostbusters villain, you know, you know. I just didn't think it fit with that, with that, with who they should have fought in the in the uh, the movie. Um, I saw Kong. I like Kong a lot. Anybody, anybody see Kong? I like it. I thought it was. No. Good. Kong was great. Anybody? Anybody else? What else? You guys want to know how I started and everything? There we go. Yeah. That's uh, okay. So I started as an intern in um, for Marvel. I was. Uh, I went to St. John's University. I tried to break in as an artist, believe it or not. And I was such a good artist that I'm a writer now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I went to art school. I went to art school. Um, we had an internship to pick uh, my senior year, and one of them was Marvel Comics. So I was like, oh, fuck, I don't do Marvel Comics. So I went to, to uh, I did an internship for Bob Harris, when Bob Harris was, right before he became editor-in-chief of Marvel. He was, at that point, he was the X-Men line editor. So when I was an intern, I worked on um, Age of Apocalypse. So I'll go show you how you know, long ago that was. <laughs> the, uh, um, so I was an intern, and then I was on staff at Marvel. Um, I worked for um, a number of things, but I ended up working for Marvel.com. I was an editor and the head writer. All the while, I was pitching Marvel so, you know, at first I was just doing artwork, but then eventually I was doing writing for the site because they needed people who knew the characters. I, um, so I was on staff, I was pitching all along. Joe Quesada asked me, knew, knew that I was trying to break in as a writer. He asked me to co-write uh, Iron Man with him. So I co-wrote Iron Man with him. Uh, when he left the book because he became editor-in-chief, you know, a little thing like that, um, I took over Iron Man, they offered me Wolverine, I did Wolverine, and then everything took off from there. 
Then, uh, then I quit Marvel uh, and I went freelance. And now I work. I'm a whore. I work for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I do, you know, I do comics. I do animation. I do uh, um, video games. So, you know, you never know. Don't. One thing I, I give advice to people: don't just limit yourself. Say, I'm going to be a comic book. You know, case in point, I never thought I'd be a writer. You know what I mean? It's just the way things took me. Uh, don't limit yourself into what you think you could do or, you know. I, if you're going to be a writer, write for everything. There's no reason, and write for everybody. You know, I got no rings on this finger. You know what I'm saying? I ain't exclusive for nobody, so write for everybody. It's all good. Everything I've written is good. It's all Nothing good. Bad. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. No, well, there's a couple of things I wasn't happy with. Maybe the artist or the editor right. fucked up or something like right. that. I'm going to keep that to myself, exactly. <laughs> um, but there are things, you know, look, you, you know, we're part of a process with a comic book. You, you don't get to, it's not always your exact vision. Sometimes you get hooked up with, a writer, with an artist that's not great or is doing his own thing or whatever. And, or sometimes uh, an editor gets overzealous or something like that. For whatever reason, sometimes the book you envisioned is not the one that ends up <laughs> at the end of the day. And sometimes you have control of that and a lot of times you don't. <laughs> So, yeah, there's some comics out there that I wish did not have my name on, but it's, it goes with the territory, you know, right? That happens to all of us. Which character I want to write? Um, that's a good question. You know what? Star Wars. I would love to do Star Wars. Really? Yeah. What about it? What? I, I would love to do, like, Boba Fett or, you know, like, something with the, with the huts, like a Godfather in Space type of thing. You know, the bounty hunters. Who the fuck is knocking at the door? What is this? <laughs> yeah, so... Star Wars. I'd love to do Star Wars. Uh, even like, you know, basically the bad guy characters. I'm Darth Vader, Darth Maul, Darth whoever. Okay, so <laughs> it's true bad guys. It's more fun to write? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a large part of what I've done is bad guys. You know what I mean? Uh, bad guys, tough guy characters. You know, you write what you know and, you know. <laughs> That's what you try to do. You try to, you try to maintain what the character is, but Put a spin on it. I just did a book, Jughead the Hunger, okay? Which is Jughead as a werewolf killing the shit out of everybody in, in Riverdale, okay? But at the core of it, you know, that's the crazy concept because it's a horror title. But at the core of it, Jughead still has to be Jughead. He has to still be the guy who eats a lot of hamburgers and he's funny and he's best friends with Archie. You still have to, the character at the end of the day still has to be the character. You know, you could put your spin on it or, you know, whatever, but the character has to remain, especially when you're working on company books like DC, Marvel, you know, um, Archie, whatever. Their characters, they want to be their characters. You know, you, you only can do so much. Yes, there's a lot of research. <laughs> the, the, as a matter of fact, people ask me if I read comic books. I don't read comic books, okay? Here's what I do, because I don't have time right now to read comic books. I read what I have to read to do my job. You know what I mean? So I'm doing some Suicide Squad coming up, okay? I got to read Suicide Squad to know what's going on in the current, who's, who, the, who the members are, what's the, you know, the current status quo, and all that other stuff, you know? So... Um, that's what happens, you know, you get homework assignments <laughs> when, you, when you're a comic book writer. If you want to do your job right. If you don't, you, you want to, you know, you don't give a shit about that, then whatever, but. Yes? Um, can I ask for your advice uh, for... Brian? No, you cannot ask for my advice, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> In terms of... Um, Here's exactly how I start. Here's the secret recipe, okay? Here's the secret sauce. I'm gonna tell you right now. Here's what I do. And this was actually taught to me by uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Joe Quesada. They, did a, they used to do a version. When I co-wrote with Joe Quesada, this is what, basically a version of this is what he showed me, okay? What they used to do, Jimmy and Joe, used to work with um, cards, okay? And they would write things on cards, okay? I do a version of that. What I do is I'll take a, a, a piece of paper or, or a computer and I'll number it, let's say it's a 20 page story. I'll number it from one to 20, okay? And then every page I'll say, uh, every, you know, ne next to everything I'll put a line of, you know, this happens on this page, this happens on this page, this happens on this page. So you, what you're do basically doing, uh, a lot of what we do is we break things down, okay? So when I pitch, let's say a six part 
uh, story for Marvel or DC or whoever, I send them a what we call an outline. Okay, and I basically say in issue one, this is going to happen. Issue two, this is going to happen. Issue three, or uh, breaking down exactly what I'm doing actually is fur I'm taking that a step further. I'm now breaking it down to pages. Okay, page one, Wolverine punches Sabretooth in the face. Page two, Sabretooth punches. <laughs> you know, it's it's as simple as that. Where you start breaking things down, and then you start breaking things down further into panels. Each page is into panels. Panel one, this happens. Panel two, this happens. So that's Essentially, that's how I get started, you know. Sometimes I'll, bu I'll build a scene around, you know, fight scenes are easier for me. Um, than th the hardest feet scenes to write a lot of times are talking head scenes, you know. Because you want it to, you just don't want two guys sitting there just talking, blah, 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 blah. You want there to be sometimes something interesting going on while they're doing that. Um, it's, it, it, you know, the tough thing is to make that interesting. Um, but there's some scenes I'll build around action, and there's some scenes I'll build around dialogue. Well, I'll just have people talking, and I'll, okay, this character says this, the character, this, and then I'll do it afterwards. I'll add, you know, what the action is. Some, well, sometimes I do it the opposite. Sometimes I just, most of the time, I'll do it action and then dialogue. But it, de it depends on what the scene is, what the character is, and what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah, those, those... Those are the biggest pains in the asses in the world, okay? People, people like, when I, when I did uh, the first Marvel vs. Capcom game, they, they were like, oh, this must be the hardest thing you've ever done in the world. No. The hardest thing to do is one of those big line company crossover fuck-up things, okay? Those are the toughest things to do because there are so many moving parts, okay? A lot of times, you know, you're doing something and, and you know... Something happened in this, and you have to now change your story. There's so many different moving parts where characters are in certain places, where things have to end up. That there's sometimes not the, you know, that depends on the the, uh, the crossover. But sometimes they're not the easiest thing in the world to do. The best one I ever. Did, um, let me see. I'll tell you the crossovers I enjoyed the most. The, the Civil War, the War Crimes one I did with the Kingpin, and Iron Man. Uh, basically because I did that one with Tom Brevo and he basically let me do my thing. It was, it was, it was going to be a, a story with, with uh, Kingpin and Iron Man, this um, basic chess game of, of what they were doing. And, you know, um, it, it got to get back into some of the Kingpin's backstory and stuff like that. And who, it, says, it, said a lot, it says a lot about who the Kingpin is as a, as a character and as a man. But I, that, to me, I, I enjoyed that one. Um, I enjoyed like doing Villains Month for uh, as a villains guy. You know, there, to me, there is no better uh, rogues gallery in comics than Batman. Batman to me is the best. You know, I would say Spider Man second, and then maybe like what? Well, you're gonna say something. No, I agree with that. You agree with that? I okay. Agree. You're very excited yeah. about that. All right. Yeah. Wolverine is mine too. So you say you say the whole same thing. Batman, Spider Man, right? And then Wolverine. And then Wolverine. Yeah. X-Men, I put the X-Men, you know, like that. I would say those three, Your right? Your favorite villain that you like to write for? I love writing Sabretooth. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why I, so interesting? He kills people. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's same could be said for Wolverine, you know? Like, yeah, but it's, it, well, I love playing with that dynamic of, see, to me, Wolverine and Sabretooth are essentially the same guy, okay? Only Wolverine controls his demons where Sabretooth says, Fuck it, I'm letting it fly. You know what I mean? But they're essentially the same. They both have the same urges and, you know, but whereas Wolverine has a sense of honor, a code of honor, Sabretooth does not. So that's what really, to me, separates the characters. Um, villain wise, I love, I write, like writing the Joker when I can, you know, but the, the uh, he's always fun to do. I, like I said, Batman villains in general, I, I like Penguin, I like. Uh, I, they, they're, they're, they're my favorite rogues gallery to play with. I had, uh, they used Agent Zero in Wol the first Wolverine. I wish they didn't. <laughs> it was because it was like terrible. Um, I have something in, supposedly there's a movie coming up that had something of mine in it. We'll see, you know what I mean? I haven't seen any money from it yet, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but we'll see, you know. Um, the, 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 you know I've, I've written animation uh, like Ultimate Spider-Man. So that's stuff that you see on TV that's cool, you know. Uh, and that's like a totally different process than, than writing comics, yeah. How does, how does it the, when you're writing a comic, okay, you're, it's essentially you and your editor, 
okay? And um, you work out the story with you and your editor. And then if one of the higher ups has a problem with it, maybe you gotta go back and change something. But for essentially, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, and then you and your artist, you know, you discuss your story with your artist, or if you have that relationship or whatever. But as far as um, when you're working on animation, you write a script. Now, we, I, I was lucky enough to work with the Man of Action guys, with uh, Joe Kelly. Um, Joe Kelly like held my hand throughout the process, really, with, uh, with, my, with my episode with uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Um, and Joe's a great guy, and he, he knows story, and he's, he's, he's really good at what he does. Um, so basically, I wrote, I wrote the thing with, uh, you know, with Joe overseeing it, and we submitted it. And what you have is you have a lot of chefs in the kitchen there, you know? You have a lot of people, uh, you know, this guy's the head of this thing, this guy's the head of whatever, you know? Um, and what Joe was able to tell me, okay, because you, you get the script back and there's a ton of notes. There's like nothing but notes. And you're like, holy shit, I must have did the worst job in the history of fucking cartoons, you know? But no, that happens every week. And Joe was there to tell me, okay, pay attention to these notes. These notes, man, not so much. Yeah, yeah. So, and then you go back and you do a rewrite, and sometimes you have to do multiple rewrites. But I think I did two rewrites, oh, yeah. which is not bad. Um, you, you, know, you know, I'll tell you what the most painful thing is, okay, is when you're writing something and you put a lot of time and effort into right. it, and you know it, it doesn't work, and you have to throw the whole thing in the, in the fucking garbage. Oh. That is the way. But you know what? You have to... It's, be, it's, better, it's better that you do that than you just... Submitting something that's not, you know. Yes, yes, I've had many riffs, yes. it was almost impossible to get the artist to collaborate with what you were doing. Yeah, sometimes artists, they'll do things where, you know, and people don't realize, you know, the schedule's involved, and sometimes you can fix things, and sometimes you can't, and, you know. But, yeah, I've had stuff in comics where I'm like, it's, you know, no, no good. <laughs> no bueno. Yeah. I've, uh, well, I'm, right now I'm doing a, a creator own thing with Aftershock, which is um, called Pestilence, which is, gonna, which is basically they bought me the idea, but I expanded on it. And it's, um, it's, 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 it's almost like a what if. It's kind of like, um, what if the Black Plague that we know of was not the disease that they say it was, but it's rather a, was the first zombie apocalypse. And... Uh, but was covered up by the church. So what you have is basically medieval knights fighting zombies all across Europe and stuff like that. Um, I, you know, there's stuff I, I have, stuff, some stuff that's in the works. And, uh, I had Captain Brooklyn that I came up with, Jimmy Pamiani and Amanda Connor, but Amanda's too freaking busy, so that's sitting there, you know. But yes, I, I've, I've, there's stuff, and there's creator on stuff that, hasn't, that I have in the works that hasn't been announced yet, so... You'll be seeing some more of that stuff from me soon. Dude, just like but that's going that's, that's to happen. I mean, sometimes you cast something in your mind when you create a character. Um, you know, this character is, let's say, a Wolverine type or a Clint Eastwood type. If you even, even you know, uh, you know, sometimes you do that. You say, you say to yourself, well, okay, what if, you know, this is, um, you know, uh, Bruce Willis from Die Hard. This is, uh, you know... Um, Julia Roberts from whatever this is, you know, you, you do that in your head. Um, and then the, you make the character your own. Then you, then you expand. You don't just make it Wolverine. You know, it's a Wolverine type. And then you go from there. How, what little intricacies or whatever uh, quirks make that character interesting and not just a Wolverine ripoff, you know. But maybe you'll, you'll start that as a starting point and expand from there. What what character I'd like that's interesting? We repeat that. Like, what different like uh, types of characters do you like to write together? As? I I like mainly like to write characters with flaws. Okay, I I that's why I I tend to gravitate towards antihero, grim and gritty characters and villains because none of us are perfect, and I like to write my characters not perfect. So. Um, you know, I, that, that's, that's basically, I, I think the characters with flaws are more interesting because we all have flaws. To make character, you know, to me, the, the hardest character to write is Superman, okay? Because Superman is, and I've always said, Superman is the Babe Ruth of superheroes. 
And the problem is, is he's every, what everybody tries to achieve. You know, you want to be the Babe Ruth of superheroes. So, you know, he would be, to me, the, the hardest character to write. Uh, even though I, I actually did write him in, um, I did a um, Batman Superman story. Um, I think it's online and it's going to be in trade. Um, it's called, um, what the hell is this called? Uh, Criss Cross. And the, 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 the whole thing was um, a group of Batman villains and a group of Superman villains. They have a bet who has the toughest opponent. So you have Batman villains going after Superman, Superman villains going after Batman. You know, hilarity ensues. <laughs> so yeah, that that'll I don't know when the hell's out of that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be on um, digital and then it's in a in trade paperback form. Yeah. 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 Royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, dep it, dep it honestly depends on if you've created a character or something like that, you know. Um, if the this, this story could be as original as you want, it's, a, it's work for hire. If you're, if you're working for Marvel or DC, they own those. <laughs> you're okay. they, they own that shit, you understand? <laughs> the, the, the characters and the storyline. Um, if you create a character for Marvel and DC, you have what's called, um, at the character sharing they call it, where you, um, if they do, you know, uh, you, uh, make a movie or something, you'll get something, you know. Um, not much, you're not getting any, uh, you know, big big money, but you'll, you're will you supposed to get something. Um, but that's why you see people do create their own stuff. You keep the best stuff for yourself, <laughs> you know. Uh, and that's what you're starting to see that more and more in the industry. You, you know, you're starting to see less original characters at, at Marvel and DC uh, being created and then, more, you know, people doing stuff at Image and and Boom and all these other companies. So, yeah. Yeah. How has the industry changed since you first entered? How many years ago? Uh, I w I would say the biggest thing that has changed. Uh, I started writing two thousand one. Okay. The biggest change I would say is the movie stuff. Yeah. Okay. Because every because I the Iron Man I started writing in two thousand one is not the Iron Man you see now. Okay, the Iron Man you see now is Robert Downey Jr. Essentially, that's Iron Man right now, it, um, and that's because the, the you know people don't think oh, the movies don't have the movies have an effect very much. You know, Mar um, Marvel or DC, you know, they they have a character in a, in a movie. They want to suddenly push that character. Suddenly, you uh, case in point when I did um, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3.5, I think it was, or yeah, 3.5. Um, they were um, Capcom wanted characters like Juggernaut, Venom. Marvel wasn't so keen on putting those characters in there. They wanted Rocket Raccoon, and um, I forget who else. Ghost Rider. You know, they were pushing characters that they knew they were going to be using in other mediums. You know, um, and then, you, like I said, you see more of that. You see, this especially now with all the TV movie. You know, they're very much very cognizant of what goes on with their characters in the books. They don't, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do, look, they do that, you know. Um, they're making, uh, you know, Squirrel Girl is suddenly going to be on television now. So, you know, why do you think they have a Squirrel Girl comic? That's, that stuff happens, you know. Um, stuff gets, and you know, and then stuff reflects back into... Uh, you know, they see something that gets popular in the movies, then suddenly there's a comic, or you know, it it, it, just, it just changed everything the way everything is approached now. You know, it's everybody's very cognizant of that stuff. No, because it, well, I'm I'm just talking about well, everybody thinks that they they're going to go do a creator on comic and they're going to oh, it's going to turn into a movie. Obviously, that does not happen all the time. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's why you do creator comics, creator on comics. You want your vision on the screen. The only person, if you're doing a creator on comic, the only person who could tell you what to do with that is you. So and that's the allure to that. But you know, for every Walking Dead or you know, uh, you know, whatever uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja, or kick -ass, or yeah. what? Or kick -ass. Yeah, or Kick Ass or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's you know a hundred books that don't do you know, don't go anywhere. It's not, not you, there's no automatic formula for that where you say, hey, I'm going to create a character and do a creator own thing, and I'm suddenly going to be, you know, driving around in a limo, limousine because with all my royalties. It doesn't always happen. Yeah. Uh, Heath Ledger did a damn good job with it, but you know, um, 
I even think I even like the Jack Nicholson. I, you know, I, I know it's like it's it's cool now to like crap on those movies, but I, I like the original Batman. With, I like him too. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, exactly, exactly. When you pull out this big gun, you know. This yeah, exactly, exactly. I look, I I still like that movie. Uh, people would say what they want, um, but I thought Heath Ledger really nailed it. He he, uh, you know, he got an Oscar for it, and I think he deserved every bit of it. To me, that as far as I I remember that year was when Iron Man came out. And I said Iron Man is a great Superman, uh, a su great superhero movie. The the uh, Dark Knight. Is just a great movie. Yeah, you know, it's 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 almost elevated superhero movies. Th those uh, Nolan films, you know. Yeah, it, like, like I said, Agent Zero and uh, and Wolverine was terrible. Oh, uh, you mean on the on a, a screen something that I wasn't involved with? Yeah, of course. Sometimes I, um, I mean, Jesus, some of the early Marvel movies like uh, Daredevil. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Oh my why, God! Why, why? There's that scene, that one scene where Daredevil. Nobody knows he's Daredevil, right? Blind guy on a swing fighting Elektra. You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck? Like in, in the playground, with you know what I mean? Oh man, uh, I yeah, that was pretty bad. You know, Elektra. Obviously, that was not a good movie. Um, Mar people forget Marvel took a little bit to get their, you know, to get their stuff together. You know. Um, I, I would argue the very first Marvel movie that was successful was Blade, yeah. if you remember. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you know? That's a very underrated people, movie. People don't realize, Blade was a hell of a good it's movie. Good yeah. yeah. Like, you know, that was a character that they had not, that wasn't going on, and they said, hey, go do something with him. And that, that was a, that's a very underrated movie. That was probably why. They didn't, there wasn't, you know, that's exactly right. That's exactly, yeah, you know, yeah, sometimes. Because, I, I think it's a, it's a part underrated. Yeah. You know. you know, Stan doesn't have a cameo in that. So. Yeah. You know, because they didn't think it was going to be, you know. They didn't know what that was. But I, I thought that was, you know, I thought that was a hell of a good movie, Blade. And if they, if they reboot it, they should get him to play it again. Oh, yeah, get him out of jail. Isn't he in jail? No, he's out now? Free to play the guy again. Yeah, fuck it. Make him play it again. <laughs> I could see that being a television series. See, you know, the funny thing about Punisher, like when they were making all these Punisher movies, I always said Punisher is better served as a TV series. Hardcore on like HBO yeah. or something like that. Now they're doing it with Netflix, but I always thought The Punisher would be better served as a television series. I think they're starting to realize that more. Uh, some things work better as a series. Some things work better as a movie. Ooh, yeah. You know, yeah. some things work better PG. Some things work better R. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think they're starting to realize that now. You know, um, like I said, the Star Wars stuff. Um, the um, I, I, I did a Wolverine versus Thor thing, but I'd like to do more with Thor. Um, villains again, or, or well, I, well, always villains, but you know, um, the Thor himself, though. You know, uh, I grew up on the Walt Simonson stuff, right. so I was always a big Thor fan. Um, no one would associate, associate me with Thor, but you know, um, yeah, I mean. And then there's, you know, sometimes you, you do characters that you, you, you it's cool that you, you worked. Even like, I did Jughead for fuck's sake, you know what I mean? And, and, you, and but you, you remember that from when you were a kid, that you, you know, you're in the supermarket with, you, with, you, with your mom and, you, you know, you take one of those digests off the shelves and it's archy, you know. Uh, so it's kind of cool that you get to mark those things off, hey, you know, scratch those itches creatively with certain characters. Uh, it's it's uh, there's no perfect formula for that, but you know, um, I've been pretty work lucky because I've gotten to work on a lot of the big characters. Um, uh, I'm doing um, I'm part of the Batman event that they just announced. Um, that's coming up. Uh, I, I I like working on events and I like working on big characters. So when I get the chance, I don't say no. You know, um, but you know, look, a lot of a lot of times it's just. You know, you're waiting your turn, you know, it's, it's, you have a pitch for something and they'll say, hey, let's do that, you know. There's no exact process for a lot of this stuff. So, like, anybody trying to get into the business now, was, was like, um, I wouldn't say the easiest route, but was, like, a surefire route. Is there a surefire route? There is no surefire route. To try to get into comics right now? If, yeah. There's zero surefire route. Wow. There's nothing. There's no, there's no, it's, I would say right now, um, 
it's probably hard, it's hard as, as as ever to get to get into comics. Um, the, the the problem is like people come like they come up to your cons and stuff like that, and they're like, yeah, you know, how do I break into the business? Well, you know, it, you're not going to go to Marvel and DC right. right off the street and get a job. I'll tell you that right off the bat. Okay, your best bet to do is to do a creator own book. What, you know, you're going to have to start in the minors. You know, it's like baseball. You're going to have to start in the minors before you get into the major leagues. Um, and it's always, it's always beneficial when you could say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd, you know I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in working, whatever, and here's a book you could look at. You know, That's always beneficial. So if you have a web comic, a self-published book, that's always beneficial. You know, or you start, like you said, you, you get something uh, in some, one of the smaller companies. You just get something published. That helps, you know. So, I think artists. I think artists have it easier than than writers. Really? Yeah, because here's the thing. Okay, um, somebody comes to me with a script. Okay, They're, I'm not going to read their script. Okay, and I'll tell you why. Okay, it's not because I'm a prick and I don't want to read your script. Okay, it's because there's been so it, it, we don't do it anymore because there's been so many occasions of oh. This guy read my script and that uh, idea appeared. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for legal reasons, we don't do it anymore. Um, but artwork is, I could see in art, you know, someone could, I could see that is good. Yeah. Um, one of the cons, uh, I was just at La Mole in Mexico City. Um, a guy showed me, he came, it's funny because he came with his, he came with two portfolios, okay? And he had his portfolio and he had his brother's portfolio. And I, what I didn't want to tell the guy is his brother's portfolio was a lot better, you know? But I could see automatically the, uh, the, that, that guy was going to get a career in comics, okay? The, the, the brother. Um, with, an, with a writer, it's, uh, the only way is, and here's the other thing. Editors are swamped with work. They don't have the time to sit down and read. They, they, I'm lucky they get to read my pitches, okay? And I'm a, and I'm a professional, you know? They, they don't have the time. They're not going to read somebody off the street pitch or whatever. They're, they're just not going to do it. So it's it's I think it's harder for, for writers to break in than ever before, right now. You're shaking your head, but it's true. <laughs> this, this, this uh, as far as working at DC and Marvel, see you know what people, and I know people. Oh, you know Marvel's better than DC, or DC's better than Marvel. Let me explain to you something, okay? There is no perfect company, okay? There is flaws. There's good things and there's bad things about both companies. I'm lucky enough that I. I'm, I've been able throughout my career to navigate between both of them pretty well. I mean, um, I have enough connections at Marvel. You know, I started at Marvel, so I think a lot of people view me as a Marvel guy, even though right now I'm doing much more DC stuff than at Marvel. The pendulum shifts back and forth. You go, you, like I said, you work for everybody. You know, there's, um, you know, but there's no, there's no, there's, each of these companies has, I've had problems at any of these companies, and I've had good things happen at all these companies. It's just the way it is. There's no, there's no good and bad companies. They, they just, there's good and bad people, you know. But as far as companies, you know, um, there's pros and cons to working at both of them. So as opposed to writing for one com company? Well, first of all, how I broke into comics, they won't let you do that anymore. If you're, on st uh, if you're on staff, okay, Back then, that's how Fabian Nicienza broke in. That's how I broke in. There's a, a few people who broke in like that. We, we were on staff, right. and we would um, write or you know pitch, and, yeah. and they would hire you from staff. I was on staff writing three books. I was when I was on staff, I wrote, was writing Iron Man, Wolverine, and Deadpool all at the same time. Right. They would never let you do that in a million years now, because they Marvel especially they view it as um, uh, they won't they don't want. People hiring their friends, their views like that. They don't want people hiring people they know like that. So now you would never be able to write, you know, do that. What the how I broke is 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 like an antiquated thing. Yeah. My generation. What am I fucking Wolf of Brimley? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? My generation. <laughs> so those. I'm not that much older than you, scumbag. <laughs> so like those who, who know getting into it, then right? The mm -hmm. best way, uh, I guess, or. Yeah, the best way would be to. Yeah, yeah. You, you, the best thing is to yeah to do your own thing. You know, whether it's a web comic or, um, you know, a creator own thing or you know, a self published thing or you know, 
or like I said, you try to go to some of these smaller publishers and, right. and, and try to get something done there. Because I'm, I'm telling you, Marvel and DC are not hiring you off the street. They're just not. You, uh, need, to have, you need to have a portfolio. You have to have something, you know. Okay. Um, artist, uh, you know, you, you better, I'm talking about as writers. Artists, if, if you got the goods, they will hire you. Or they'll put you on something, you know. And even, even when, you, let's say, they're going to hire you on uh, Marvel and DC, chances are you're going to do a backup story on something. You know what I mean? A fill-in issue. Some, something that's not, uh, you know, they're not letting you write Secret Wars right off the fucking gate, you know? <laughs> it's just, you know, some people, you, you can be surprised. Some people think, you know, I'm going to come off the street and I'm going to, you know, be writing X Avengers, X-Men, and whatever, but that's, that ain't reality. What's, like, the weirdest comic you ever wrote? The weirdest comic I ever wrote. Yeah, like, so far left field, you're like, what the fuck am I writing? I wrote something called Galactus the Untold Story, okay? And it was basically, you ever see, you, you ever watch, you watch like the History Channel? You see like these uh, weird uh, dramatizations and right. stuff like that? It was like that, you know what I mean? But it was, it was, it was like a weird, um, it, you know, it, it, I had like the actors don't like match, quite match, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like Mr. Fantastic is a fat guy. And you know, it, it, it's like stuff like, it was, it was, it was, it was played for laughs, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was pretty, pretty out there. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, ma ma mainly, uh, I mean, some of the Deadpool stuff, you know, has been. What's the craziest Deadpool you ever wrote? Any particular one? There's there's a backup story I wrote where um, Deadpool's sitting there talking to a. Um, I think it was I think it was Mar breaking into comics. Uh, I think Matteo Scalera actually was the artist on it, which yeah. obviously he's working. Um, but that was like his first stuff. His right. stuff. Um, he uh, it, it's Deadpool sitting in a, in a, in a, um, a, a therapist's office. Oh, he's on the couch and he's right. recounting all these things about you know. And what we find out at the end, all of it's in his head, and he's like sitting on a beach chair and talking to a parking meter. So <laughs> that's you know. Speaking of Deadpool, and knowing that he breaks the fourth wall, I think Deadpool in general is one of the toughest characters to write, okay? Because in general, comedy is always hard to write. I find comedy, like Wolverine, I can write Wolverine in my sleep, I can write Wolverine, okay? I just, I know all the, you know, comedy, because you want, especially on Deadpool, you, uh, even Harlequin, okay? Like I just did Harlequin and the, the Gang of Harleys. You want things to be funny, so you want... You know, especially Deadpool. Deadpool's got to have some jokes. Right. You know, Deadpool's can't... If, 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 if your Deadpool's not funny, you suck. <laughs> you shouldn't be writing it, you know? Deadpool has to be funny. Right. That You know, Wolverine has to be tough, Superman has to be heroic, and Deadpool has to be funny. Right. So that's sometimes not that easy. You have to come up, you know, to come up with joke after joke, you know, to make funny situations and stuff like that. It's, it's a hard... It's not that... It, I would say pound for pound, it's maybe the hardest character I, I wrote was Deadpool. Is there like an easy character that you have? Someone uh, like contrast to. to um, well, I, I, well, I, I, I find Wolverine much easier than right. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah uh, two quick. Right, so, at me, everything I wrote is good. <laughs> all my stuff is the greatest yeah. of all time. No. Uh, the. Um, Who's your runner up? <laughs> <laughs> my second would be. Um, I think Alan Moore's um, Watchmen. I think that's that you know stuff stuff for me that I uh, or Walt Simonson's Thor, uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil, yeah. um, you know Alan Moore's Watchmen, and basically anything Alan Moore does. You, you know, people say what they want about him, but the guy's brilliant. You know, um, as far as the best thing I've done, uh, I don't know. You know, um, I think I think a lot of people associate me with Wolverine um, as you know, but you know also. I mean, I, I like the Batman stuff I've done. I've liked um, the Civil War stuff I did. The you know, there's a there's a Deadpool, Punisher, some, the Punisher in the I like Punisher in space. I mean, it's a fucking crazy off the wall thing, but you know, uh, I'm proud of that series. I, I, a lot of people dig that series, you know. Um, so yeah, there's, I don't think there's any one set thing. I wouldn't do comics. No. <laughs> um, if I could do anything differently. Okay. Here's, here's what I would do differently. When you first break in, now you, you, you got a career is like this. You know what I mean? 
there's ups and downs. I, when, when I first broke in, you have the idea of, oh, well, you know, especially me, I broke in, I was writing Iron Man, I was writing Wolverine, I was writing Deadpool. And, you know, and my, my attitude was like, oh, so I'll go write The Avengers next, and I'll go write Fantastic Four next. Well, a career isn't quite like that, you know? And I think what I would have did maybe, I would have smelled the roses and appreciate things a little bit more at, during the journey than I did, you know? Now, as I'm older, when I get, like, in case of point, I'm right, working on this big Batman event, cool. I'm working on a big Batman, you know what I mean? I, I, I learned over time to appreciate it, but I wish I would have did that more in the beginning stages of my career and not think that, oh, I'm just going to go right, yeah, I'll go right this over here. Go, yeah, that doesn't necessarily happen that way. Ah, uh, jeez, that's, you know what, that's a tough question. It's also, it's not necessarily the company, but it's more editors, you know? People don't realize you, you, you know, you establish relationship with editors over, over time. Like Mike Martz is an example that I used to pitch crazy shit to. I, I, you know, uh, Apocalypse vs. Dracula. I pitched that to him in a bar one night, you know. Both of us half crocked and, you know, we were just like, I, I don't know how it even came up, but he, you know, he's a big fan of history and stuff like that. And uh, I said, you know, I got this crazy idea, you know, and he's like, send me a pitch on that tomorrow, you know. But after, so it's sometimes it's just, relationships this business is a lot about relationships it's as much talent as you have uh making relationships networking and stuff like that is just as important you know the the to be a, a comic book creator nowadays is different you know your online presence matters you know your persona matters that it, all that matters now whereas before it didn't you, we didn't know anything about creators or anything like that but you know Going to cons and meeting people. You know, how, back then, there was how many cons? Now there's like a con a week, you know? Um, promoting yeah. yourself, yeah, <laughs> it is. The, in the United States, there's literally like three or four cons going on. And I'm talking about big cons. Uh, Memorial Day, I'm going to be at MegaCon. There's also a big con in Phoenix that same weekend. And there's a big con in San Antonio that same weekend. And there's a big con in Toronto that weekend. So, which is not in the United States, obviously. But the, uh, the it goes to show you, they, and they, they're not afraid to put them up against each other anymore, you know, where they used to. Um, you know, there's, there, it's like the circus. Like, people, <laughs> it's, it's, there's, con, it, people think that there's big money made in cons, and they're starting to more and more, you know, open it up and stuff, so. You mentioned you worked on Age of Apocalypse. Yes, I, as an intern. As an intern. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that old, <laughs> for Christ's sake. I was an intern. I was an intern. Well, right, so, uh, what, what was the problems with Age of I didn't write. I was an intern. I didn't do anything. So, I, I made zero, Xerox copies and got them coffee. Oh, so that's <laughs> you had zero input? Uh, as an intern, you have zero input. You have no input whatsoever. When, you, uh, when you're an intern at Marvel, I mean, sometimes they'll ask you your opinion, but for the most part, you're... And I would say, an in, my, as an intern, it's an invaluable tool because what you get to you get to learn the process. You get you get to see, but you know, you're peeking behind the curtain. Right. You know what I mean? And you're seeing the process of how it works. You, you, you're getting to know people. You're making connections that were yes. You know, you're seeing how the sausage is made. Right. And to me, that was invaluable because I, you know, I made hey, I made relations. I was Bob Harris's intern. Okay, I'm working with Bob Harris now in uh, at DC. Right. You know, um, that's the one thing I, I would stress to people is um, the relationships you make are very important, and you don't realize how important right. some of them are. You know, don't be a dick and treat people like shit. You know, right. even like um, I know uh, you know writers and artists that treat interns like shit. The, you know what? That intern tomorrow can be a guy you're gonna want work from. You know, um, there's interns that are there now that uh, had, you know, were interns when I when I was uh, a writer, and now they have significant jobs at Marvel and DC and elsewhere. It's just the way it works. But sure, you shouldn't treat somebody like a dick if you, because you should be a dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> that goes without saying. But also, from a business standpoint, it's not a good business stamp. You know, shouldn't do it either. What? One minute. All right, quick question. Uh, let's go. No, guys. Yeah. When you sign on eBay, you, I'm charging for autographs now. <laughs>
Hundred dollar, hundred dollars an autograph. <laughs> Gad, what? What's your stupid question? <laughs> Most legally impossible crossover. I'd like to see over. Punishment. What, what, what is this? Teletubbies? What, 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 I, I, hear, I hear things. Right. No, no. Punisher Teletubbies. What the? Punisher Teletubbies is good. I'll do that one. <laughs> Punisher just shooting the fuck out of Teletubbies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I would write that one. Huh? That's the dream of many people. Yeah, I would do it. Tell somebody to be punished. I'll do that one. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk afterwards. Maybe Punisher, we'll... Punisher, Punisher means Archie. Yeah, you know what? That was like a really, really ridiculous idea. I understand, but you know what? I don't... It's, look, you know what? I give Archie credit. Um, they, 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 they recognize the fact that, you know, there's only so many times, you know, Betty and, and Veronica can go to the chocolate shoppy and, and fucking, you know, go to the sock hop with Archie and shit. You know, so they tried all these different things. Like, you know, the, the horror line does very well for them, you know? And um, I, look, I think, it, I think it's brilliant. Like I said, I just did this Jughead the Hunger thing. Flew off the shelves. They, um, people, people are, are, you know, it, it's a new way to reinvent the characters. So, you know what, fuck it. Put Punisher versus Predator, whatever. Punisher versus whatever, you know. As long as the story makes sense and it's, you know, a fun story, then why not? That's it? That's it. So she wrote? Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Clap for myself. <laughs>